Jack Nicholson there speaking back in 1976. Um, Dennis McDougal, you know, he sounds quite light and, and fun as he does throughout the, the whole hour of that question and answer session, but he doesn't usually speak to he doesn't usually speak to people. How did you go about actually putting your biography together um, when, when you weren't actually able to speak to him personally? Well, um, you know, I, I have uh, uh, met with Jack before, uh, notably uh, during the Live Aid concert in the mid-1980s. Uh, I saw him backstage, which was actually what piqued my interest in uh, eventually getting around to doing his life story in the first place. But uh, the way you do this kind of a book when you're not given access uh, to the principal is by... Uh, it, interviewing everyone around him, uh, ex-girlfriends, uh, high school pals, uh, uh, grips, um, studio drivers, anyone that you can, uh, you can find who has had a, uh, uh, a role somewhere in his life. And it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. In a way, um, actually, it's my preference to, to read and to write that kind of a book when you have the cooperation of uh, the principal, uh, what you always run into is uh, the, the censor's uh, uh, pin, uh, either from the Jack Nicholson's themselves or uh, the people who represent them. They, they, if you have an interesting bit about them and they don't want it in the book, uh, they just cut off their cooperation. If you don't have the cooperation in the first place, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, ab absolutely. So, what did you actually learn about Jack, the movie legend? A, a lot of his films tend towards that um, dark, neurotic type character. Um, what did you learn about why he particularly is drawn to those type of roles? Well, I'm a Freudian, and I believe that everything goes back to family uh, in the earliest years. So, I uh, and I pay a, a considerable amount of attention to that. Uh, I think in Jack's case, um, all you have to do is look at the circumstances of his, uh, uh, his birth and his uh, upbringing uh, and his tendency to, um, towards sardonic, dark humor uh, and uh, a more brooding side become crystal clear. Special memories about about the family side of things because he was quite old when he found when, when someone turned around wasn't it kind of his who he thought was his sister actually turned out to be his mother and he was actually raised by his grandparents is that right? Well, uh, he was at, he was raised in a, uh, a matriarchy uh, actually his uh, his grandfather uh, was a drunk and uh, was essentially banished from the house so his grandmother took over the house uh, the household and. Uh, ran a beauty parlor and kept uh, body and soul together, and, uh, and he had uh, two, um, two, quote, sisters, end quote, uh, who were actually his aunt and his mother, uh, who were uh, raised, uh, they were raised as, uh, as siblings, uh, and he never learned the truth until uh, the principals were all gone, and uh, his his grandmother, who had passed herself off as his mother, uh, died in, I believe it was 1970, it was right around the time of Five Easy Pieces, and then his, uh, his real mother died of breast cancer uh, several years earlier. So he didn't learn uh, the truth until, um, I believe it was during the, the filming of, um, oh, a comedy that I uh, can't, it, the name escapes me now, it was the comedy that he did with Warren Beatty uh, in, uh, in the mid 1970s. We'll, we'll come back, we'll, we'll find out what it is, and I'm sure someone will text in and, and tell us what it is. Well, let's go and listen to a little bit more audio um, from that 1976 QA at the San Francisco Film Festival. Here's Jack Nicholson, this time talking about the types of roles he likes to play. Well, I like playing parts where there's a lot of work in the uh, sort of late morning to early evening. <laughs> uh, and oddly enough, just the opposite kind of women attract me. You know, uh, I, 
don't know. That's another thing about movies. You don't get to ride a horse in the theater. You know, uh, you don't get to ride a, you know, you, you don't jump off things. And, uh, you know, it's, I like to do comedies because it's funny. I love to be funny. I know this is not obvious right off, but if you, <laughs> if you knew me, you, you'd know what, what I meant. Uh, so it's great when you're doing a comedy. Everyone has to encourage you, even if it's not funny what you're doing. You can say the dumbest thing trying to be funny, and it's not like in life. You know what I mean? It doesn't go <clears throat> like that. They go, <laughs> you know, and, and, and then you go do something because it's your, your at job and your whole attitude is, you know, this is funny what we're doing here. And I, it's great to spend day after day after day at that. In fact, for, what about Western, Joe? You know? I mean, I love playing cowboy. I mean, I do. But yet a grown man cannot admit this. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't go around your house going to the deck to the You know, you can't do it. But in this, they pay you to do it, you know? It's fabulous. Uh, I like to play parts every day in which people admire me and things. All kinds. I'm only kidding around. Chat Nicholson there again. Um, I think the film that you were talking about, according to uh, Google and Amazon, was The Fortune. Is that the one that's you were thinking it, about That's there? exactly it, yes. 1974. Right. And it's available on VHS if anyone is, uh, is interested. <laughs> now, Jack Nicholson there was talking about um, the types of roles. And, and we heard, like, the full gamut there of, um, you know, obviously he likes to do comedies and we know him for, for the dark ones. A, a part that he did discuss in, um, in that Q&A was some of the roles that he turned down. And I was quite interested to find out that apparently he turned down a role in The Godfather. Yes, that's true. Um, he... Uh in fact, it may have been Michael Corleone. Come to think of it, I, uh, I think so. I think he so. was he, he was what, one of several actors who uh, were considered for that role before Pacino took it. Uh, and there, I, there are there are a number of, of uh, memorable uh, uh, films that never got made that uh, Jack was uh, uh, involved in, and it's a shame because it would have been great to see him. You know, to, to see Jack as Napoleon, for instance, uh, he, he wanted to do uh, he wanted to do a uh, a film and had uh, optioned the rights to a book about uh, the last days of Napoleon. Uh, kind of nifty to imagine him in a Napoleonic uh, he uniform. Did he tore, didn't he? He for Napoleon, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's true. Uh, you know, yeah, I... trickery can do a lot, though. I, yes, I have to cast him with munchkins, I guess. 